So the first time you open Lightroom, it's empty. There are no images in there. You have to import images. So in order to do that, we go here to import. We find the folder that has the specimen images we want to process. I know those are saved here on my desktop in day five under Lightroom image processing practice. Now I've put in there several files that may be empty because this is the pipeline or the, the passage through which these image files will go as they make their way to the archive. So the raw files, as they come from the camera and to the, to the imaging station, to my processing computer, I put them in the raw image files. And as I mentioned earlier in the presentation uh, this morning, I named those folders according to the date which I save them to my computer. You can organize your folders however you want to help you to maintain your collection and not lose anything. So here I batch, or I uh, save these to a folder on November 1st. And within that batch of folders that, that I downloaded, of images that I, that I saved to my computer, two people captured specimen images. One's Alex, one's Lisa. So if I want to work with only Alex, only Alex's images, I select his folder and I choose import all in selected folder. If I, for any reason, want to select just a few from Alex's, then I open Alex's folder and I select whichever ones I want to open. But in this case, I want to open all of them. So I select this. Now it's asking me a question. It says, there are 20 photos taken between the dates October 28th and November 1st. Do I want to apply any develop settings to them? I don't have any develop settings I want to apply yet, but maybe the next time I batch import, I will have some. Is there any metadata I want to attach to all of the records or all of the images? Yeah. Since I know that these are all Alex's, let's say I want to embed the metadata for the photographer. So did you see that? So here, under the metadata drop-down list, it is? Yeah, is it different? It's not working at all? Okay. Um, so select metadata, new preset. I'm going to name this Alex <coughs> Images. And in it, I want to populate the field for creator. I want to populate the field for copyright. Status, copyrighted. Those are the two main things I like to capture, regardless of the digitizer. So I create. So now I have an Alex Images preset. I also have an NYBG or Barium Specimens preset. So you can have any number of presets. So I'll select Alex, import. You see there, status bar showing me the process is finished. Now I have 20 photos imported and only one of them selected. I can see this one selected because it's light gray. If I select this one first, and double click on it, it'll open it in this view. This is loop view. Grid view, loop view. If in grid view, I select one image first and then all the others, the one image I selected first is brighter than the others. So if I was to synchronize the images for metadata or for develop settings, the one that's lit is the one that is the template the one that everything else will be synced to, every other image will be synced to. So make sure that you have the image selected that you want, uh, the settings for which you want apply to all the other images. So I see here on the left-hand panel, Alex's folder is on my C drive. If I want to see 
which folder is Alex's parent folder, I click that. I see the date there. I want to see higher up the chain. Here, it's, I know it's in my raw image files. Okay. So I know when I imported that it said these images were generated between October something and November. So given what I mentioned earlier about choosing batches, I want to batch these based on imager, who is Alex, they're all Alex's, but the date's different. So let's look at the metadata. This might be a little bit challenging. One thing I didn't mention earlier, each one of these panels can be seen or be hidden based on pressing this triangle here. So I can show or hide. This is the film strip. This is the grid view. So I'd like to batch based on date. I see some are in October, some are in November. So I'm going to batch process these that were done on Monday, the 28th. I want to know who did it. I want to know if the shutter speed is the same and the aperture is the same for every one of those images. And you have to give it a couple of seconds to run. No photos in selected fold. Yeah, I have no idea why it's doing this. I should show you. Sort by capture time. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. So I see here for the 28th, there were six pictures taken with the Mark II with a f stop of 2.5. and a shutter speed of 1 over 50. So we can assume that the conditions under which all of these images is the same. So now that I've made sure of that, I, I select the image that's the brightest. This one's obviously the brightest. It, it stands the greatest chance of being overexposed. Hopefully, given all the, the precaution we took during the, during the image capture process, there, the only kinds of changes we'll need to do are very minor in Lightroom. If you're finding that in this stage of the process you're having to make very big changes to compensate for the exposure or the color balance, then you need to revisit the settings on your camera and try and um, optimize them again. So having selected the one that's the brightest, let's go over here. Let's add everything that's human readable into this image. So I can see here that Alex was added when I imported. Copyright was added when I imported. I want to add to this that this is a virtual herbarium specimen. You don't have to do this. This is just a category we assign in our own database. So I type that into the field and I tabbed out. So when I look at this record, I see this data in this field. When I look at the record next to it, or the image next to, next to it, it's empty. So if I want to put into this image title field all of the information that's in this image's title field, I select this as my template, I select the other that I want to synchronize with it, and then I press synchronize. And it highlights for me the fields, oops, I'm in the wrong, yeah, no. It highlights for me the fields that it sees I have populated. And those that are different, it tells me. Here. So select only those that you want synchronized. If you forget and you want to synchronize something else, you can add more information in there. Now they both have the same information. 
So I'm going to do that to all of the images. Sync metadata. Synchronize. So that's your first step. Enter into your images any text that you want embedded. So then we pick our brightest picture again. Go to develop. All right. How does it look? First thing I want to check, does the image name match the barcode? No. So that's textual information. So that goes in the library module. So I go up here to my barcode file name, or what should be, type it in as it should be. Now I'm satisfied. If I was to look at all the rest of these, I would see too that they're not named according to the barcode, but that's okay, we'll let that go for now. Just wanted to show you, you can update your image file names here. So we go to develop. I've checked to make sure the image file name matches. Now I want to make sure it's in focus. I want to see it at one to one. <coughs> this is 100% magnification. Is it in focus? You have to give it a couple seconds to render. I say it's okay. So, how is the white balance? Highlight the color checker, hover your mouse over the white square. You see the values in the histogram change as I move around it. Same for here. So what I want to do to white balance is I click on the eyedropper, I pick a neutral target just like it tells me to, and I click it. And these numbers here have stabilized, or they've equalized, you could say. Now, knowing what I know about my color checker and what I know about exposure, I can see that the, light, or the right side of the histogram is a little too far over the edge, which tells me it's a little bit overexposed. So in order to get rid of that, or to bring down the exposure, I scroll down to the exposure, highlight the field, hover my mouse over the white, and I use my arrow keys up or down to change the exposure. I want to change the exposure to around between 92 and 93, and I'm happy with that. It's giving me a dark warning, but I'm not worried about the darks as I am as about the whites. So when I'm finished with that, close it. So now I've adjusted the white balance and I've adjusted for exposure. Now I scroll down. I'm going to hide this panel so you can see more. I scroll down. I select linear contrast. Is 